going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know it's Real Talk Sports Talk, live from my man, Kavis, your boy, Johnny. And let's talk boxing, because this weekend, we are finally at the home stretch. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney is going down for the WBC 140-pound title, Barclays Center in Brooklyn. I wanted to bring in a special guest to go over with me, because... You know, this dude, my boy, I mean, he does it up, man. And um, he is a part of Four Corners Boxing, the boxing media channel. I had his boy X on a couple of weeks ago. We chopped it up. And, you know, I've been checking him out on the podcast every week. And I just had to bring him here because he knows his boxing shit. So we're going to go over some Ryan Dev stuff. We're going to go over some other stuff in the world of boxing. But without further ado... I want to bring in my boy, the man with the credentials, <laughs> the boxing maniac, baby, from Four Corners Boxing. What's you already good, brother? Know. What's going on, Johnny? You already know. It's your boy, the maniac. And I'm here on the hangout spot with my man, Johnny, baby. Four Corners Boxing, baby. Johnny, thank you so much for having me on, my brother. I appreciate it's you. Good. Thank you for jumping on, man. It's uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Like I said, man, I've been watching your podcast every week, man, and it's like it's like I'm I'm sitting back, you know, in my living room talking boxing with my boys. I mean, y'all just keep it real. Y'all know y'all shit, you know. Y'all breaking down the fights. Y'all y'all giving y'all take on the world of boxing. I mean, it's just if you guys, if my viewers have not seen. Uh, any of the podcasts, make sure you tune in every Wednesday, Four Corners Boxing. Uh, these guys do it up. You know, you got the Maniac, you got my boy X, you got Uno, you got the heavyweight champ Mo. Oh, yeah. I mean, they they just do it up, man. They do it up. But um, these are the guys with the credentials, man. They hitting all the big fights. In fact, you guys are going to be live and direct this Saturday night for Ryan yeah. and Dev. We'll be there. All right. Right now, what I want to do is I want to I want to talk about a topic that you brought up on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, which I thought was was a really good topic, and it made me think. And you posed the question: Is boxing today in a good place? Mm. And I thought it was a hell of a question. Yeah. Because then I started thinking about it. I'm like, damn, is it in a good place? Off the top of my head, and I think I chimed in on that chat. I think boxing currently is in a stable position. Like it's right in the middle. Yeah. With the potential. Yeah. To 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 be over the top, right? But what's your thoughts on that, Maniac? Talk and, to me, man. And yo, Johnny, man, you you're right. It's I think I think boxing is not on the intubator, but it's still in the ICU, right? It's still in the ICU. So it, it has the potential. This is like, you know, the doctor's saying, listen, it's, it's, it's looking good, you know, if depending if we add this and we put this, maybe in the maybe in the month, be good to go walk out of here. But it's still in the ICU. And the reason why I say this, right, um, boxing is a sport I'm passionate about that I love. But we got to be honest, right? We got to be honest with ourselves. You know, some people like to avoid the obvious. I'm not, right? I have a phrase, Johnny, and I know it, it's kind of out there. It's called, it's called the crackhead um, phrase, right? If my aunt is a crackhead and the next dude's aunt is a crackhead, I can't call his aunt a crackhead. Then when it comes to my aunt, I'm like, no, 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 no. She's a crack. She she she's a crackhead because no no no. She's a crackhead. That's it. No matter how you look at it, it's a crackhead. You gotta be honest. You gotta be honest. Same thing with boxing, right? And I think one of the major things that has hindered boxing, why it's not where it needs to be, promoters, right? Let's start with them because, which I even to this day I ask fighters all the time. I say, bro, but don't. The promoters work for you, yeah. So then, why are they controlling everything? Then it don't it boggles me. So we're not getting the fights right that we want. So when you don't get the fights we want, guess what happens? It start to lose steam. And just imagine that, right? 
We spoke about it a little earlier about we're sports friends. Imagine the Jets being the best team in the AFC. The 49 is the best team in the NFC. And it's obviously they're going to play for the Super Bowl or they're supposed to. And we don't play each other because you know why? The 49ers have more history than the Jets and more Super Bowls. And if, you, if we're not going to play here and you're not going to give us this, then we're not going to fight. People will be like, what? No, 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 no. Y'all got to play. Same thing with boxing. It, it's just too much egos from promoters and fighters, right? Because everybody's about you don't bring enough to the sport. You don't bring enough to the sport. Man, set the egos aside and make the fights happen so that we can get the fights we need to elevate the sport we love, right? And, and another thing, right, Johnny? Look at this. At one time, at one time, boxing was on the two, one, two of the biggest major networks in North America, HBO and Showtime, the Twin Towers of boxing. Done. Gone. Right. And what does that tell you? Because, Johnny, I'm pretty sure. Right. I don't I don't own my own business yet, but just any body with common sense if you're a businessman and if there's something bringing you in revenue why would you get rid of it no. I, it, that don't make sense right so that's one thing and then you had hbo showtime we had channel five fox five we had channel two for a time right we also had fx1 FX2, we had Solo Boxeo Telemundo. was every Friday almost. We had that. Showtime used to also give us Showbox the next generation on Fridays where they where they have had over 30 world champions go through that Showbox, these up and coming. So it, it was successful. We don't have that anymore. We only have one major network, Johnny. And you know which one is that? ESPN. Who don't who look at boxing honestly like a back end sport because if there's a fight at 10 p.m. and there's college women's volleyball, they're not gonna take it out for the boxing. You gotta watch women's volleyball until 10 30, and then we'll put boxing on. So that just tells you that right. even though it's on the major sport, on the major channel, excuse me, they don't really care for it. We have the zone and we have ESPN and just recently added Amazon Prime and Netflix looks like they're going to dip their hands when it comes to the um fight on July 20th with Jake Paul. So no fights happening, egos, politics and people businessmen in these networks are saying nah, I I'm not investing into this sport. That should tell you something. Right? So Boxing needs to change, right? And of course, the changes, the fights need to happen. Fighters need to say, listen, they need to come together as a collective group. I don't care who you sign with, Golden Boy, the zone. I mean, Golden Boy Matchroom, Top Rank, um, PBC. You have to say, yo, guys, listen, I know you across the street. I know you across the street, but yo, bro. Let's make these fights happen. Because guess what they're going to get, Johnny? They're going to get paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you brought up a good point, man, because I often ask that question. Like, who works for who? Like, if a fighter wants a fight, go and tell your promoter to make it happen. If they take that approach, I think more fights will, get, will, will happen. But what I think happens is instead of, I think there are fighters out there that want to take that approach. And then when they bring it to attention to the attention of a promoter, let's say Al Heyman, I'm a firm believer that Al Heyman would just stop them and be like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Remember that guy, Floyd Mayweather? How rich is he today? Probably the richest athlete in sports, right? Worth over a billion dollars, maybe a couple billion dollars. You want to be like that guy? Well, guess what? I promoted him. We work right. together. So stay down, know your role, and follow. And then when they start saying stuff like that, that's when the fighters start, well, all right, yeah, I guess so. I do. I mean, I do want to make money because we all know.
like years ago, it it it, it changed. It, it it became you know when when we were watching boxing when we were young, it was more about the legacy, right? The best wanting to fight the best. Now it's like the guys that they want to fight the bigger money fights. So if this dude technically is the best fight for me legacy wise, I'd rather fight this dude because we gonna make more money. Correct. You know, like 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 the fight that we're seeing on Saturday. I mean, Devin Haney has said it himself. I wouldn't be fighting Ryan Garcia if he wasn't a big name because I don't think he's on my level. So that told me all I needed to know. Um, but I mean, there's just so many other things, man. I mean, the matchmaking by far, the lack of, of big fights being made. I mean, that's that is that is the, the main reason why we are we are here and not here. I, I agree. And that to me is where boxing hurts by not having a commission, let's say, right? You know, like UFC, you know, they got Dana White there. And you know what? I've heard, I've heard UFC fighters saying, you know what? I want to fight him. I don't want to fight him. And then Dana White will come on and say, nah, he ain't fighting him. He's fighting him. Right? You got a commissioner, a guy that's putting the fight together. Every major sport, we talked about it. I mean, every major sport has a commissioner. You got baseball, commissioner in baseball, football, yeah. you know, basketball. But we got nothing in boxing. No. You know, we rely on the promoters. We, we obviously can't rely on the sanctioning bodies because rankings no. mean anymore no they and i've said it they the cartels of boxing the sanctioning <laughs> bodies are the cartels of boxing bro don't 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 ever get it twisted don't ever think these guys are stand up no they criminals man and and fighters even mentioned it themselves while we're paying such high sanctioning fees for these belts man and it's crazy and you know um also about the um the whole, you know, the whole state of boxing as well, man, is just that remember in our time, right? We're talking about the 80s, the 90s. Boxing was probably the premier sport in America. But why was that? Yeah, they had star power, but fights were being made. Mega fights. Leonard, Hearn. And then in the 90s was arguably probably the best era of heavyweight. You're talking about Riddick Bowe. You're talking about, um, you know, Tyson. And I mean, the list goes on. And and boxing was just, you're, listen, your mother, your grandmother, whether they spoke English or not. I say, I say Mike Tyson. I, he, he, De La Hoya. He, they knew. Now, they can't name one fighter. Absolutely. And the problem is it's it has nothing to do because these fighters don't lack star quality, Johnny. They have it, a lot of them, but it's not getting made. And guess what? If you're not fighting and, the, and these big fights are not getting made, then then no one, not, nothing is happening. You're fighting regular fighters. He might fight a, a tough fight. Then he'll fight two Mickey Mouse fighters. And then we just don't have it. Like I said, the, the major four fighters, right, is Tank. Devin, Tio, and Haney. Not one of them has fought each other. That's that is an embarrassment, and, and that's the sad. One is there? There's no talk about them fighting each other anytime soon. Just on social media, and Whoa. Shakur, and yeah. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it already. Like, don't show, don't send me. I told Mo, Mo, my brother Mo, because I know he's gonna watch. Listen. He, he sent me the Shakur tank. I said, brother, please stop it. I don't care <laughs> for what. Fight. It, on, on social media, Johnny, they fought seven times already. <laughs> these, <laughs> these guys have more. <laughs> Forget about it. You know, like, come on, man. I need to see you on the ring. Bring that energy to the negotiation table. If Shakur's going to fight tank, we know who's the A side. Tank. That's not even up for debate. Shakur, take your percentage, whatever it is, because you feel confident you're going to beat them. Well, then go in there, take the lower cut, whatever it is, go in there, do what you got to do, win, and you could become a household name by beating someone by the name of Tank Davis. We seen okay. it with Tarver knocked out Roy Jones. We didn't really know about him. He knocked out Roy Jones. Forget it. He started doing movies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, facts, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's crazy. It really is. I mean, boxing, boxing can be that sport again because we we got we got some we got some great fighters out there, young, 
you know, I mean, in a, in a different array of talent, you got some great boxers, power punches, speed, you know, marketability. I mean, it's all there. It is. They just got to put it together, man. You know what Correct. I mean? Like these promoters and, and these networks, they got to start working with each other because that's when they're going to make the real money. I just don't get another thing. And I'm here with the maniac, uh, the boxing maniac from Four Corners Boxing is what's going on? What's going on with the judging, man? That's another thing that I think is really, really. Listen, man. The sport of boxing. Maniac, talk to me, man. What's yeah. going on with this, man? How yeah. can we have a fight? That two judges see seven five, regardless of the of who you know who they got, right? And then you got one that sees it ten rounds to two or eleven rounds to one. And Who's and gonna... I'm, you know what? And, and that that part just bypassed me. Thanks for bringing that up, because that's also plays a major part on why we losing fans of the sport. Because if I'm not a boxing fan, right? And you 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 say, yo, maniac. Come watch this fight. And I'm watching it. And I say, oh, man, he won this fight, man. It ain't. And then I hear it. I'm like, yo, Johnny, man, F this sport. I ain't going to watch this. This is this is what y'all going to give me? No, I don't got time for that. And that's a major problem. That's been a problem in the, the sport of boxing for a long time. And you know why? Because there's no repercussions, right? It's just like a child. If... They're going to tear up your, your apartment, your house, and you don't do nothing about it. They're going to continue to do it. Right. Same thing with judging. And it's they need to be held accountable or at least be suspended or be on probation again and say, yo, you need to take classes again, man. Because like you said, how is it that the world and your fellow true co-workers saw it pretty much the same, but... You saw it in a whole different light. And I don't care about all, oh, but it, there's one in every angle. I get it. But, bro, if you've been doing it for a long time, I get it. You're going to have a day or two where you're like, damn, you, you kind of judge this bad. And that's fine. But like you mentioned, it's consistent in the sport. And that's not good for it because that's continuing to give it a black eye. People are going to look at that and say, listen. If this is what boxing has to offer, then I'm I'm gonna go across the street to MMA and watch that. Correct, correct. I mean, yeah, boxing is his own worst enemy, you know. And and you brought up a good point, uh, accountability. You know, in in everyday life, you know, we got normal jobs. If we don't do the job that we're paid to do, we get held accountable. Absolutely. The point where if it continues to happen, we lose our jobs. What's going on with these guys? And again, that's where the lack of boxing commission hurts us if we had a commissioner you know that would that that was holding people accountable maybe you know this uh i'm not saying it wouldn't happen because again you know people are going to see things differently right you got some judges that judge for aggressiveness you got some judges that judge the sweet science you know um you know ring generalship but like i said yeah. the most part we looking at the same fight and you can't tell me a close fight is now all of a sudden 11 rounds to one it makes no sense it makes <laughs> That's my rant. That's my rant for today. We all know that the biggest opportunity in boxing is the lack of matchmaking, putting these big fights together. So tell me right now, what are the five fights that you want to see made this year or possibly next year? Wow. You know, that's that's phenomenal, man. I mean, I want to see like a thousand, but all right, <laughs> the five, at least five, right? Love I it. think so. I think the and these are fights that could definitely happen this year, and like you said, perhaps sometime next year. I definitely want to see, and no in particular order, right? <laughs> um, Matias versus Pitbull, mm. and I'm gonna tell you why, right? Mm. This is a fight, Johnny, that you have a Puerto Rican and you have a Mexican. Now, anybody who's been watching the sport closely for a long time understands that the biggest rivalry in boxing is Puerto Rico versus Mexico. That is a rich history of rivalries. For those that don't know, man, just check the archives, check YouTube. Puerto Rico and Mexico has put on some phenomenal fights. And this fight will be no short of that, right? You got two fighters that fight like two express trains, 
on rush hour in New York City. Now imagine those two trains colliding at the speed they go. That that's not going to be a pretty sight. So this yeah. fight is going to be violence. You got to deem the fight violence because that's what's going to happen. So you got the Puerto Rico Mexico rivalry. You have both fighters with a belt each, right? And they fight in style. Bro, it just, it sells itself. It's a fight that now, my casual friends, I'm like, yo, come watch this fight. Because I promise you, they're going to be like, the Macaulay Culkin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, they, when they see that fight, man, it's going to be phenomenal. So if that fight happens, that's a fight, again, these fights can't save boxing, but they can only help. Right. They can only help. They like the medicine. Right. You, you got to keep taking the medicine to get better. So these are the drops. These are the patillas. These are the pills. We, they need to take the sport <laughs> to help it, man. And the second one. Right. Yo, Teofimo Lopez against Devin Haney. Mm. This mm. fight is a fight from one from lightweight. These fighters already have some history. Father and father don't like each other. Fighter and fighter don't like each other. They at 140 now. They both hold the title. Teofimo's currently the lineal champion, which is recognized as the number one fighter of the division, right? Haney holds the WBC. So I would love, I would love for that fight to happen because, again, that's a lot at stake, right? This is a right. Who's going to be the new face of this era, right? Because they say, well, Tank is there. And Tank is more, for me, number-wise. But as a fighter, the win of a T.O. Haney could kind of really give us a sense of, man, this, this, young, this young fella here, he could be the man to lead the next generation. So I would love that because, again, and it's, it's a unification match. There's something on the line. It's just not a money fight, right? And then number three. Honestly, mm -hmm. the win of those those two fights I just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Just imagine that, man, because then that would give us an undisputed champion at 140, right? And that's something that boxing, I give it, right? I got it same way. I, I'm quick to kill my sport, but I also got to give it credit. There's been a lot of unification matches in boxing, which I love, which will give us that, right? And then I would say um, I would love... Uh, now I'm going to go to the heavyweight, Fury and Joshua. This is a fight that has been in the making. And, I mean, in Europe, Johnny, I mean, they'll do 120,000 if they have a stadium that holds that much capacity. Because, you know, those Europeans, they don't Wembley. play. They'll do that in Wembley. Yeah, Wembley. Man, listen, don't do – they drink so much beer, man. <laughs> that, listen, you, 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 you like – I can't with these guys. I thought, I thought, what, I forgot which fight I was in Vegas. I thought they was going to run out of alcohol. I said, yo, bro, leave some for the Spanish. I like to drink too, <laughs> you know? But the point is that um, the European fans, man, they are probably one of the most loyal fans, man, of all the boxing. They, it, it could be Anthony Joshua versus me. And they're going to do 90,000 in the soccer stadium. So Fury and Joshua will be major, not only over there, but here in North America as well, because I'm pretty sure we would love to see that. And that would give, if Fury beats Usyk and then beats Joshua, then he rides into the sunset, Johnny. There's nothing else for him there at I heavyweight, do. right? I and do. then, of course, this fight, I've even did a green screen about it. Canelo versus Benavides. I knew that was going to be in here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, but, but you know what, Johnny? I come to the realization that it's just not going to happen. I just don't think it's going to happen. It can. I'm not saying that it, it won't. I'm just my opinion because this where it can mess up for Benavides. We know he's going to go up the light heavyweight to fight, right? Yep. Now, Benavides is a big guy. He's not a small light heavy uh, um, one middleweight like Canelo is. So him going to 175 and then potentially coming back to 168 to fight Canelo, it's now to make that weight could be. Good point. 
no bueno for him. And maybe that's what Canelo's thinking. You let him go up, and then we bring him back down, and then we'll fight and we see. So those are, you know, those five fights that I think for this year that without a doubt will help start to bring that that heart rate up more for this sport, man, because they're all major fights, and they're all fights that everyone is going to be tuned into. But there's one. There's, no, there's, go ahead. Listen, let me hear yours. I know you got brother. Listen, we, we you talked about it earlier. Instead of going at it on Twitter, put 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 their asses in the ring and go at it in the ring. Shakur and Tank. I think that fight will be fire at one thirty-five. Absolutely. <clears throat> and um, but no, I, I love this list. I, I I mean, I would want to see every single one of these fights <laughs> that you just mentioned. But I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you right, right. now. So we're going to do a little rapid fire. Okay. So again, since these are your five fights, first thing that comes to your mind, who wins between Matias and Pitbull? Who you got? Well, all right. Listen. Why? Not why. Who you got? All right. I'm going Matias. Tio versus Dev. <sighs> you know what? Tio, when there's a big fight, he show out. I'm going Tio. Tio against Matias, since you got Tio. Tio. Fury, Joshua. Oh, Fury. But it'll be a hell of a fight. Canelo Benavidez. Benavidez by homicide. <laughs> <laughs> if it was to happen today, man. But the moving up, I, I, you know, that could change. I hear that. Tank and Shakur. Oh, damn, Johnny. Yeah, it's really on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is, I like it. That's how we do it here. Man, that's that's just so, that, that one is tough, man, because I know it's rapid fire and it's just who you got, man, but it, that, that's a fight that you got to get in. You got to channel the mind, man, because of the styles, man. But you know what? I, I, I got to slightly favorite tank man I, I just i think he could do it all man but it's it'll be interesting I, it's that's a fight i could see shakur winning but i, I gotta go with tank because not only he could punch he could box he has iq and i think sometime in that fight he will get to shakur but shakur is probably one of the least hit fighters today mm -hmm. in our sport so it, it'll be interesting shit please Please, the boxing gods, give us that fight. <laughs> I agree. Um, I agree with, with all of your predictions. I would have picked the same except for the tank fight. You got Shakur? I, I, hey. I'd lean towards Shakur because of that boxing ability and that defense. I mean, I think Shakur is a special fighter, man. He's a generational fighter that can do it all. Um, but 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 again, I, by no means, I'm a big Tank fan. I, I would slightly favor Shakur in that one just because of the defense. Yeah, uh, man. But I wouldn't be surprised if either one of them wins, man. But that's what's up, man. I really really love this list. Now let's now let's now let's cook. Now, now we're gonna put our aprons on. We're gonna cook like you say, right? Let's talk about it. That's that's what my yeah. man maniac let's, said. Let, let's let's talk it. about it. Let me hear that. All right, let's talk about it. So, main event, Saturday night, Barclays Center. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney for the 140-pound WBC strap. Four Corners Boxing will be live and direct. Before we get into predictions, yeah, we had the final presser today. Yeah. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, I'll I be honest, I didn't tune in. So well, if, if, if you if you've seen Ryan's antics the last month, then you didn't miss much, right? This right. So we'll we'll get into that in a second. Then you had you had the face off, you know, where Devin Haney shoved uh you know Ryan, then obviously you have Ryan's antics the entire month. And you know, I've personally maniac, I've been watching boxing my whole life. I know you have, I've never seen a fighter take this type of an angle. And I'm only saying that for the people that believe that this is an act to sell tickets. I gotta be, I gotta keep it real because you know how we do here in the hangout spot. We keep it real. Yeah. 
I don't think this is an act. I think I think your man, your man Ryan is. I think he's cuckoo for cocoa puffs, man. <laughs> I think there's something wrong up there, man. I mean, and what I don't understand is is well, first of all, I'm I'm even surprised that this fight is yeah. two days away and and it's still on. I thought yeah. this was going to be canceled a long time ago because of Ryan's mental issues. Um, but I tell people this all the time: if this is an act. Then give my man an Academy Award because he got me full. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I don't see it. If it was done to promote the fight, I don't think that was a good idea. I think it might have turned a lot of people off, including people like myself. I mean, I, I was chomping at the bit when I first heard about this fight. And then after his antics, you know, I'm like, is it even going to be competitive? And I've been spending the rest of, I've been spending the whole month trying to convince myself like, yo, is this fight going to be competitive? Is this fight going to be competitive? And man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hit, I'm interested to hear your take on it. Like number one, do you think Ryan is putting us on, and then all of a sudden he's going to show up Saturday and 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 and, and be focused and be laser sharp, and uh, or is or are we looking at a total mismatch that could potentially yeah. end Ryan's career? Yeah. Listen, oh, man. Oh, you maniac. Yeah, listen, brother, you you touch so many points, bro. You you definitely in that kitchen. You got that Benny in the oven right now. You cooking, you put the sasong, you yeah, that Benny's coming out delicious. I cause you was listen, it, I, I just it's just to pretty much piggyback on what you said, right? Again, and you man, you you hit it on the nose, Johnny. I've been watching boxing a long time. I'm 42 years old, right? So I, I've been watching it for a while. And you're right. I've never seen someone take this route. Right? I thought it was me. <laughs> no, no I, I, I haven't. If somebody in the comments could to tell us and, and come up with a fight, you know, I listen, I'll eat my crow and be like, oh, yeah, that one. All right. But we've seen the Mayorgas. We've seen the Mayweathers. Right? We've seen... um Yes, my tight. We've seen a lot of fights and how they sell the fight. This is not how you do it. He's like way left, way left, That's and it gets way. and it gets worse by the day. It gets worse, and and people. I've been seeing people. Oh, he got you fool, guys. It, it's just an act. No, it's not. Because I'm gonna tell you something. If you if that's the that, that was his way, like you're saying to sell tickets, in fact, you crippled it. Because Johnny, we spoke, you were on the fence. Uh, should I go? Should I not? This made it easy. Nah, bro, he might not even make it. Let me not even waste my time on um, flights, hotels, and, and, and tickets for the fight. Absolutely not. I'm not gonna do it because this guy might not even be there. And it got to the point where it's not only us, the promoters said it. Oh, Barbosa will be the fighter in case. And why they talking about that? You never hear that in any other major fight about a backup fighter because even they knew, get, you know, he's not all there. And now I want to be clear about something. I have family and friends who suffer from mental illness. And that, you know, that's a serious thing, man. Yeah. It's, it's something that... It's, it's an unfortunate thing, man. And, you know, those people, you just got to pray for them. Now, oh, yeah, now people probably in the comments are like, yeah, but he they say he spoke to a psychiatrist and they clear him. Listen, this is about money, Absolutely. right? I'm going to clear you, Johnny. You a millionaire. Yeah, he's good. Well, if I'm wrong or if we wrong, we'll see Saturday, right? And I think that these antics are going to show Saturday night. And what I mean by that is, for one, Ryan, as a fighter, has many flaws, right? One thing is about his footwork. He crosses his feet. So a lot of the times, he's not cutting off the ring the right way, right? He's fighting a boxer, right? Haney's not a puncher. He's a boxer. So we know who's going to be the aggressor for the most part. That's going to be Ryan. So Haney is going to pretty much to me, all he needs to use is his jab, which he has a very good jab. Just going to pop that jab and keep fighting on the back foot and keep turning Ryan, meaning angle, pivoting, make him 
uncomfortable because Ryan is a fighter that he needs a stationary target because he has the equalizer. That left hand is no joke, right? Because he could win this fight. I want people to be clear. I'm not saying he can't win this fight. I'm just saying that he's not going to win this fight because I don't think the mental is not there. And plus, what he brings as a fighter, like I said, he's not technically sound. He throws wide punches, right? He doesn't have a consistent jab, right? He doesn't have a, a good combination punch package. He just doesn't really, to beat someone like Devin, you're going to need two things. Be as skilled as him or a pressure fighter like a pit bull or Matias that's going to do that for 12 rounds and make him uncomfortable. Ryan doesn't possess that. I think what Ryan is going to do, he's going to try to force the action. He's going to go in there. I'm going to knock this guy out. And I think he's going to run into something, Johnny. Same thing in the tank fight. And I just feel that Devin, I said it, he's going to tend to him. 10 rounds to two, Devin Haney. And don't even be surprised if Haney stops him late. Because the mental, right? We've seen him in the tank fight. Now, people say, oh, he got hit with the body shot. He didn't quit. Both could be true. I just think, again, I'm an observer. It looked more like he said, man, I don't want to go through this no more. I'm down. Yeah, it was a good body shot. I could come back, but I'm good. So I think if it's going bad for Ryan early, he might try to force the action. And by forcing the action, he's going to run into something which is going to be detrimental to him. Hence why I see Haney winning this fight. Decision, but I can also see a stoppage. Man, we just, listen, we went from the kitchen to the church because you you, pre you preaching, man. You 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 a pastor right now. You preaching. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, listen, I, I agree. And, and like I said, I've been trying to convince myself, like, does Ryan really have a realistic chance? And to your point, yeah, absolutely. He got, you know, he got the equalizer. He got the left hook. The problem with that is everybody knows it, including his opponent. And Devin Haney is one of the best fighters at taking away your biggest strength. You know, he's a thinker in the ring and he's only getting better. And he's and he's filling into his body, which means he's starting to see more of that of that power. We saw it against Prograce. So to your point, I totally see Ryan getting stopped in this fight. Uh, I, I just don't see how he can win. If he was mentally there, I'd give him more of a shot to win because let's keep it real. There's, there's familiarity there. They fought each other in the amateurs. And I know people are going to say, well, that's different. They were in the amateurs. And I get that, right? They're two different fighters. But there's still something to be said about two guys that know each other very, very well. You, now you throw in the mental issues, and I'm like, nah, if you ain't got it up here on fight night, you know, it doesn't matter how physically fit. And trust me when I tell you, I'll give him props. He looked good. Today he looked fit. He looks like he's going to make weight with no problem. He's cut up, but it don't matter how this looks. If it ain't here for a fight of this magnitude, I just don't see it. Now, I was going to make a bold prediction yesterday on the podcast <laughs> because everybody on the podcast, and I agree with everybody, was was, was saying that Haney is going to win. And I was just going to throw a curveball and say, well, guess what? What about if we see Haney up seven rounds to nothing, totally mismatched, Washington Ryan, and all of a sudden the left hook comes out of nowhere, and he just catches Haney, and boom, like you say, how it goes? Night quill? Yeah, night quill. <laughs> you mean that extra strength, <laughs> night quill. Anesthesia. Listen, but I'm Johnny, it's myself that that can happen. But, but then that, I said, wake up. Yeah, no, but no, that's that's also a possibility. And you know what? That can be. It's. I just think the only way that can happen if Devin falls asleep on the wheel, right? If he just start going on cruise, you know, when you're driving late night and you're on that highway, there's just and you're like, oh shit, hold on, let me. Let me let me let me chill out. So if Devin doesn't fall asleep on the wheel, he'll be fine. But if he's up seven zip, and I mean dominating Ryan, he's like, man, this guy ain't gonna hit me. And then Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, I'm telling you, 
It's uh, but I don't see it, but man, that'd be listen, that'd be crazy. It's uh you know, it's boxing. So I guess anything can happen, but no, I, I don't see that. I don't think this fight is a mystery at all. I think Devin Haney will win this fight fairly easy. Correct. The biggest mystery of the night to me is if Barclays will sell out because as of today, there are still plenty of tickets. So that's that's going to be a mystery to me. Y'all going to be there first uh, live. So I know we're going to be chopping it up on, on, on text. So I know you guys are going to keep me posted. Um, and as far as the undercard, I won't go into specific uh, particulars about that because yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think that they did the fight fans any favors, but I will say that I am kind of excited about the scrappy, uh, Jimenez fight. You know, I think that has a tendency to possibly, possibly steal the show. I think it might be a more interesting fight at the end of the day than the main event. Again, I hope I'm wrong yeah. for my viewers out there. Where can they find the maniac at? My peoples, man, follow me, D-T-H-E-E, -E, the underscore boxing, the underscore maniac on Instagram. Once you dare, you could write on my on my bio, you could get into the YouTubes, everything else that I have, my TikToks and all that, man. You know, you follow me, I follow back. I'm not one of these guys that I need a million. Listen, if you follow me, it's, I'm following back, man. The love is the love, you know, and... um. You know, Johnny, thank you, my brother. I appreciate this, man. This, this was cool, man. This was good, man. I had a good time right here. The only thing I was missing, a little drink. I should have just poured me some Hennessy. And, Listen, man, and I see your ball. I see your ball behind you. When you was walking, I said, damn, bro, I could use some of that right now. <laughs> so this is this is the theme, brother. When I invite people to the hangout spot, it's like you coming in and you hanging out with me. You know, in here, you know what I mean? That's, that's how I cool. felt, man. I felt like I was just right there and ready to play some Pac-Man too, man. I see that Pac-Man in the back. I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a, I, I'm a gamer too, man. That's what's up. So when Four Corners hits uh, Florida, we're going to do it up. We might do a live show here. You are always welcome back at the Hangout Spot. For my viewers, uh, if you are new to watching my videos, please subscribe. This is how we do it up here at the Hangout Spot. We got weekly guests. We chop it up and talk boxing. And let's not forget... Once football rolls around, we're going to get into football heavy with the Jets as well. So make sure you are along for the ride. And as always, I appreciate the love and support. Boxing Maniac, I appreciate you coming on. This Anytime, is your boy, Johnny, signing out from the Hangout Spot, and I will talk to everybody soon.